All right, everybody, this is Ross, and today's video, it's the first day of my fig season. I'm super excited about it. And I think a lot of you guys out in like October, September, and August, when I'm harvesting these fruits, you guys don't really think about what went into all of this. Um, at least some of you newer guys, people who haven't really been growing figs all that long, um, you just are amazed by the fruits, but you don't really know how we got to this point. So I'm glad to show you guys the steps and everything that I'm doing to lead us up to that point, which is really starting right now today, which we're turning on the heater in the greenhouse. And we have an electrical line that comes in and that's how we're able to get electricity in here. And this is really just a small space heater. There's nothing really special about it. I think it's quite efficient. I like the, the angle of the blast. Um, it did a really nice job in my house. So I would recommend this particular heater uh, but it's not like it's a super deluxo greenhouse heater that like, you know, is like thousands of dollars. This thing is $100, I think. Um, and you can get some space heaters for way cheaper than that that will do pretty much the same job. It's just heat this very small area for me. Um, and the key here is to heat this greenhouse up at night because this greenhouse will heat during the day with the help of the sun, right? That's how greenhouses work. Um, but at night, all that heat escapes. This plastic really doesn't do a whole lot for insulation. And it's really only about a four degrees difference from inside the greenhouse to outside. So let's say it's 32 degrees outside. It's only 36 in the greenhouse with this plastic. So I need to heat it or I need to insulate it. And we've been insulating it all winter with the help of this tarp here. And this tarp just goes over the top and I tie it down to the other side. And that gives us probably an extra four degrees on top of um, just this standard old plastic here. So it really does add a lot of value there. And in fact, this winter, um, I only had to run the greenhouse heater once, which was a couple days ago. We got down to about 14, 15 degrees and I figured, you know what, um, let's not risk it. I want to keep the trees obviously above about 20 is really the ideal temperature there um, to keep these all happy and healthy. Um, now when they wake up, when they have some leaves on them, I need to keep this greenhouse above 32. So I've been kind of reluctant in the past to start this process, this wake up process too soon. Um, I have tried it, I think in the past around February 1st. Today is February 15th. So we're doing this, um, believe it or not, actually 15 days earlier than I normally would. I normally, and I've set it on this date in the past, is March 1st. That gives me a really nice head start to the season. So there's a lot of value in it. Also, it's really not all that expensive. We're not that too far away from the spring. Um, and also, um, there isn't too many cold, more, like more cold days in the forecast. So for me, I think that's the biggest point is that if this green, if it gets to like 20 degrees outside or even lower, I'm going to want to actually come back out here and throw this tarp back over top of this to help insulate this because those are the temperatures that can really mess things up in here. I don't want the temperatures to drop below 32. So if it's 20 outside, this greenhouse heater or this heater, I should say, really has to work pretty hard. Um, so that's probably going to happen between now and spring because my average last frost is May 1st, um, I would expect by March 15th, we probably don't have many of those 20 degree days left. Um, you know, it did just get to like 15 degrees here, but we're in February. And I imagine with the forecast looking ahead, I imagine with how things have been going this winter, that we're, can, we can do this a bit earlier than we normally would. And I just don't recommend you doing that unless you're confident again, that you're going to have a spring like what we're having here. And I could be wrong. Obviously, no one knows what the weather is going to be like. But I would rather not have to deal with these trees being awake and there's like frost and very cold temperatures outside, right? What if something happens? What if I lose electricity? What if whatever, right? So I just highly recommend you be a bit patient with this. I think a lot of us in the Northeast, and at least where I'm at, at least people in the South uh, can really start thinking about doing this process. 
The safe date, as I recommended here, is March 1st. But again, when you turn this heater on, uh, even though it's, it's February 15th, we do need another about 15 days, even 30 days, before everything in here will wake up. So um, I am really thinking a bit ahead because this process just does take some time, right? It's like I'm pretty much playing that trumpet song and everybody's waking up in the military. Um, it's kind of like that, where everything isn't gonna just suddenly wake up, but I'm sort of doing that to them is like really t saying, hey, it's spring, guys. <laughs> wake up, but it's gonna really take about 10 to 15 days on average, 30 days for probably some of these pots, these trees that are on the lower level. Um, maybe they're further away from the heater, positioned differently in the greenhouse, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, this thing I think is a really big benefit here and that's why I'm so excited. So let's talk about why this, this is really so important to me is that we're able to get all these late season varieties in here. I've specifically put the, the varieties that take a longer time to fruit, I've put them in the greenhouse. The shorter season varieties are either planted in the ground or are in pots in underneath the sunroom. And that sort of acts as like a root cellar. And those will be waking up sometime around April 15th. Same thing with these trees that are covered right now, protected from the cold, in ground. These are gonna be uncovered around um, March 15th or March 1st, depending on what the weather is doing. Um, I don't want these trees to see below 20 if they're in the ground. So um, yeah, that'll give you some dates, but the late ones are in here, and that's like sort of really important because if they don't have a head start, they're just not gonna fruit. The other big points here, is that I have some Breva producers. I have some Bifera varieties. Um, the Bifera varieties, or any Breva producer, is gonna put out Breva about 90 to 100 days after they wake up. So 15 days from now, when they wake up around March 1st, 30 to, or 90 days later, puts us at June 1st, I should have my first Brevas of the season, which is pretty damn good. June 1st is a really good date um, to be expecting your first fruit here in Pennsylvania. Um, the main crop will take about 15 days after that. So if I have a very early variety in here, like let's say Improved Celeste, uh, Ronde Bordeaux, Hardy Chicago, I have some Azores Dark in here, I have Campaneri, I have different varieties in here to try to experiment and see, you know, just how early some of these can fruit and what the greenhouse does to them. Um, but historically, they have fruited about those very, very early varieties about um, 15 days after the Brabas do. So if my Brabas normally, on a normal year, will fruit for me by June 15th, the main crop comes in July 1st. So that's pretty awesome. July, having any fig in July is like a huge difference between August and even September. It's like I'm growing figs almost in California uh, with the heat that we have, the amount of sunlight I have here in the yard. Um, we still can get some rain, don't get me wrong, but it's really quite a big difference in how they perform. And that's probably when I have the best fruit quality here in this climate. So um, yeah, those are the three different categories in which they fall in and what's in here. Um, I also have a board, a, a, a wooden board here, specifically to block the path of the heater uh, because that dry heat that all heaters produce can actually dry out some of the wood especially if the the wood is very close to the heater or in the direct blast of the heater um, getting those constant dry blasts of heat will kill parts of the tree or even the entire tree so it's really a good idea to help block that heat you just want the ambient heat in here to be above 60 that's the magic number here, guys. At nighttime, we don't really need to go crazy right now. It's so cold, the day length is getting longer, but the sun angle of the sun is still not that high up in the sky. You can see the sun setting over here and it's really below these trees. So the greenhouse really isn't getting a whole lot of light anyway, which is why I believe that the light really isn't all that important right now. It's really just about the heat. 
And if we can keep the nighttime temperatures above 60, the metabolisms in here are gonna do pretty well um, in a 24 hour cycle. Cause during the day, we're gonna get some sunlight in here. Maybe we'll have a cloudy day and the greenhouse really won't heat up all that much. But uh, on the days that are sunny, the sun will take over, the heater will stop. And then at night, the heater kicks on to keep things above 60. A root temperature, a soil temperature, of about 60 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty good metabolically for these figs to actively do, start doing something, to start growing. Um, 70 is obviously better and 80 is even better than that. But uh, I can settle for 60 and I can you know, feel good about that in terms of the money that it's gonna cost to run this heater, right? And also, we don't wanna overdo this process. I really wanna stress that don't do it too early and don't blast the heater from day one, <laughs> okay? The more that this heater runs, the more that the soil in here is going to uh, evaporate some of that water out of the greenhouse and out of the soil, you're gonna have to, because it's so dry in here, you're gonna have to water these and you're gonna have to water them very frequently, more frequently than you think. And it just becomes a hassle, number one, and you can end up killing some trees, you can end up stunting their growth, you can end up just doing a lot of things you really just don't wanna do by blasting this heater. I promise you, from you know three or four years of having this thing now and trying different things, my second year, I decided to go a little crazy with it and see how you know nuts I could do and how really how that heat would really affect everything in here. I had it like 100 in here on, on a, a number of nights, or a number of days, I should say. Um, and at night I was keeping it above like 70, 75, which is really just, just way too much. So I think it's better to kind of give them a rest and also don't really try to rush this process. Uh, it should be a more natural process, just like they are in the ground or on the patio, um, a more natural wake up process. So just take my advice on that and don't rush through this process. Um, and I think that's mostly it. Those are the big tips here, guys. And uh, I'll just give you a view of what the greenhouse looks like. We do have some room on the inside here if I wanted to maybe start some seeds in here or something very soon. Now that the cover is off the top, we can start seeds in here if I wanted. And uh, everything is dormant. Everything looks healthy. The wood is fine. The greenhouse was kept above 20 all winter and you can see how good everything looks in here. Um, the soil is actually still a bit wet. I haven't watered anything. So the soil's still moist, which is good because we watered all this before we brought it in and we put down mulch on top of the pots. So by doing that, the soil's very moist right now. I don't have to water this for quite some time, even with the heater on. And this should give me a nice period of time so I can wait till it warms up a bit. I'll get the hose out, turn on the water outside, and uh, I can then water these trees. But uh, that's why I think it's so important before you even put them in here is to water them in well and add that mulch. The mulch is gonna cut, really help with the evaporation process. When the sun comes in here and really heats this thing up, also with the, uh, the heater just doing its job, making it very dry in here, um, it really does make a huge difference by adding just a couple inches of mulch on every single pot. So big tip, I hope you guys have some success with this. If you're doing something similar, um, that's pretty much every little piece of information that I can really give you guys that's very helpful. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you guys soon for tomorrow's video. Check us out on figboss.com, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe to the channel. We'll catch everybody soon. Take care, guys.